Hi, I'm Karen, Library Assistant at the Richardson Sloan Special Collections Center at the Davenport Public Library. I'm here today um, to talk to you a little bit about scrapbook preservation. Um, obviously, your scrapbooks are heirlooms, maybe from your grandparents or maybe from your high school days. And you want to maintain the provenance, the, the reason that the person compiled the scrapbook. So we really, when we receive scrapbooks in our collections, we really try not to disassemble them if at all possible um, because we don't want to destroy that inherent value. However, sometimes just due to the inherent nature of the materials that the scrapbooks are made of, we have to do some preservation. So here are some suggestions for you today and maybe you can use them with your own scrapbooks at home. You want to try to store any um, valuable items, be they scrapbooks or other heirlooms, in a stable environment. So that means a consist consistent temperature and consistent humidity, if at all possible. Um, sometimes um, scrapbooks come to us in a variety of formats. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. The first thing we're going to discuss is the bindings. Scrapbooks can have a spiral binding, just like a spiral notebook. They can have what's called a post binding. In this case, this one is um, held in place by screws. Sometimes there'll be um, little metal posts that even have extenders in them if it's a, a, an extremely thick scrapbook. Sometimes instead of um, posts, you'll find string or what looks like a shoelace. Um, and we call those lace bindings in that case. There are um, three ring binders, just your typical metal three ring binder. And there are books that are sewn together, like this record book that was uh, used for keeping minutes of the organization. And the pages are actually sewn in with thread. Um, the other thing that you want to look at is what's called the support. That's the uh, material that the items are attached to. Sometimes they're paper. Um, a lot of the older scrapbooks have a black paper. This one happens to be what I think originally was a beige color, but it has faded due to the chemicals in the paper and it's turned sort of a purplish blue. It can be um, what's called a magnetic support, which isn't a magnet at all, but um, these were really popular in the 60s and 70s. It has adhesive and a clear plastic layer, and when you put the item on there, it held it in place and it seemed like it was magnetic. Um, there can also be sleeve protectors or um, plastic overlays. Um, uh, typically with the older scrapbooks, this is, is the type of material that we're working with. The next thing to think about is the adhesive that was used to attach the items to the support pages. Um, was it cellophane tape, which yellows terribly? Um, was it a glue, a rubber cement? Um, was it a pin, pins, staples, paper clips? like this one, over time can rust and um, create issues with your scrapbook. And then a lot of times, if it's a photo album, there'll be photo corners. Um, and sometimes then the adhesive on those comes loose and then you lose the entire picture. You don't know where it's supposed to be in the photo album. And lastly, you need to consider the actual items that are in the scrapbook. They can be photographic prints, they can be newspaper clippings. Um, a lot of times you'll find programs, um, graduation announcements, um, brochures, greeting cards, postcards, um, locks of hair, which we would call organic matter, like pressed flowers, locks of hair in a baby book, and then inorganic matter, which would be possibly a ribbon that someone was awarded as a prize or or for attending a conference, and um, yarn, um, sometimes nut cups from teas or brunches. So um, those are all things that 
present different issues when you're looking at scrapbook preservation. I'm going to begin with this spiral bound magnetic notebook from one of our collections. Um, since it's a leading candidate for care, these magnetic albums um, are really awful. The adhesive oxidizes and either becomes so um, strong that you cannot remove the items that are adhered to it, or it completely fails and um, it results in the items falling off the pages. When you're ready to scan, you've got a couple different options. You can go to uh, a library like here at the Richardson Sloan Special Collection Center at the main branch of the Davenport Public Library and use our scanner. We have a kick scanner. It's very user friendly. You can lay items flat or if it happened to be something that had a really tight binding, you can um, adjust it to the appropriate level. Um, it's real easy to use. As I said, you just touch any button to start, set your scan settings. Um, since we want this to be a preservation quality, I'm going to set it at the highest possible, and I'm going to set it at color, and then we just hit close. And then um, to begin, I'm going to do the cover and every single page in there just as it is right now. So I will scan and the very first time it will ask me to read the copyright notice and accept that and then it just scans automatically. And the image after it has been scanned will pop up on the monitor. A second scrapbook that I'm um, working on here and we want every single page, even the blank ones, because we don't want any confusion at all. And as you can see, this one, the supports are paper, and that paper has discolored because of the pulp in the paper. Also, You'll notice as, as I'm going through here, I'm just kind of gently see how adhered these items are. They're pretty good, actually. Um, they don't seem to have dried out a whole lot. They don't seem to have um, discolored a whole lot. They, there doesn't seem to be a lot of transfer. Um, now, when you get something heavier, like a booklet, Something. Sometimes you'll see that there's an issue where the page bends, and that is something that you have to be aware of. With a post-type scrapbook, we can actually take those posts apart, and um, then we will that will loosen the pages and allow us to interleave pieces of acid-free paper in between each of these pages. Okay, now that I have removed the posts from the scrapbook, I can start interleaving the paper between each page. Now at this point, if there should be a blank page on both sides, I wouldn't need to save it. But we just lay a piece of archival paper, and this is an 11 by 18 that I just cut to the right size, and just go page after page with an interleaving paper and you want to be careful as you can see here already there just because of turning pages there are already some tears so you want to try to hold on to it in the least dangerous place if you will and if it's a particularly heavy piece because of a brochure um, then you want to be sure that you hold both sides of it as you turn it continue in that fashion. Okay, we're back to our magnetic scrapbook that we were using um, 
that we were scanning earlier. And so, as you can see, we need to do a variety of things here. We need to check and see how well these are adhered, and they seem to be adhered really well. So I'm not going to try to remove those. I'm just going to place a, a piece of acid-free paper there and let that be. This page, when I pull the plastic back, I already see that this photo corner is loose. Let's see if the rest of it is. Yes, it's okay. So I can remove that carefully. Sorry. And um, using a very, very, very soft pencil. This is an art pencil. Um, uh, you want one that, the softest pencil that you can find. You're going to turn it over and on the back you're going to see what it says. Okay, it's identified as Charter Members Iowa Alpha Epsilon. I am going to record, oh, sorry, the name. Uh, I'm going to put the accession number, that's how we keep track of things, writing very gently. It's really spooky. 20, I'm going to write the accession number on here, and then I'm going to write that it's from what they have decided is book one. We try to call it whatever the donor called it. So I will record that as book one. Then on an archival acid-free envelope, without the picture in it. You want to do this without with it, the empty envelope. You don't want to damage the picture in any way. Again, I recorded our accession number, the scrapbook number, and that it's the charter members. And then I will slip this in here. And you want it to completely cover the image. You don't want any of it to be sticking out if possible. Now, if I wanted to go into greater detail, I would take this out again and I could write color fading because as you can see, unfortunately, a lot of these 1960s, 70s color images, um, they're fading and turning very red. I could write the measurements of the image on there if I wanted. I could, I could record any information I want. It's better to record it on the envelope and as little, do as little damage as possible to the actual photograph. Set that aside. Check this. It's loose on the bottom. Oh, it is going to come off. Okay, so I can take care of that. Check this. No. Alright, so that one's not going to cooperate. So this newspaper clipping, again, I'm going to record that it's from scrapbook one. Charter members. Now if you want to number your scrapbook pages without actually numbering them on the physical book, you could do that. If you wanted to add a, on this archival interviewing paper, if you wanted to put the page numbers on there, that's what it's for, to record whatever information you want. I'm going to simply put that over here, upside down, and flip that upside down. And I'm also going to add, I should say, to this paper, I'm going to say newspaper clipping, so that we know what it was. And then turn to the next page. All right, this one, as you can see, something was adhered with cellophane tape, which tends to do exactly that, turn yellow and be useless. But this will be discarded. You can check and see how well these are here. That's too good to bother. Okay, that's coming up nicely. 
and you can just use any kind of a nice stiff knife don't use anything that's sharp I'm not going to bother that this one's already loose so again all right on the back of the card I'll write the accession number and scrapbook number on the paper I'll write the same and put that it's a greeting card Paper, greeting card. If any of these come off, oh, that one's nice. That's got a date on the back of it. Excellent. So that's got some information on it. I can lay that on the same one, but I'm going to leave that as is. I'm just going to take another piece of archival paper. Check these. Obviously, there probably was a one there at some point, but it's long gone. And then we just continue. Now we have two pictures. This clipping's already loose. This one might be loose. Discard this. Here's one of those three-dimensional kind of objects that I was talking about, the non-organic. Um, so that's something that, again, we may go ahead and put in an envelope just to keep it from impacting the other items in the scrapbook. So I wanted to share the magnetic scrapbook with you now that we have completed removing all the loose items that were possible. And just as I said, we left things that were adhered and we put interleaving archival paper in there. Um, we left things that, whoops, there's one I missed. We left things, I'm gonna put it there just so I know where it's supposed to be. Um, I decided to leave this in here. The green tree is um, attached very securely and I didn't want to remove the sword from the green tree because that would change the whole message that the whoever prepared the scrapbook was trying to share. So all of these items have been, anything that was loose that could be removed was removed. The images are all in these envelopes with identification and dates, if at all possible. And they were labeled on the back with our number that we use. And this folder then holds all of the items that were removed in the order that they appeared and um, with the dates. And this scrapbook could be recreated if it ever needed to be, simply by looking at the digital images that we took earlier. The last thing to do is box it so it's safe. So I like a drop front box, personally. Find one that's the closest possible to the size of your scrapbook. It's hardly ever perfect. So you may need to crumple up some archival paper to act as a bit of a buffer to hold it in place. And put your lid on. Be sure to put the label on the edges of the box so that you don't have to always open every box to find which scrapbook is in there. Whoops, guess what? I forgot to put the loose items right in there with it and the pictures as well, right in there. Keep them all together and you're all set. You can purchase archival products like I use today from um, stores like University Products or Gaylord. They both have a presence on the web. You can check them out. They're a little pricier, true, but they're uh, written and free, which is what you want to look for. The term archival and acid-free isn't controlled. Um, so when you go to a big box store or a hobby store and you pick something up and it says acid free or archival, it only means that it was acid free at the time that it left the pro uh, production. So it doesn't mean that it doesn't have acid in it. You can also purchase a little 
looks like a Sharpie marker, but it's a pH pen, and you can use that based on the color that some, the paper turns, and it'll tell you if it's um, truly acid-free, lignin-free. And with that, I want to thank you for joining us, and we hope you gained some information about preserving your scrapbooks.